So, all right. So, in line with all of that, and we're talking a lot about faith because I really believe the people in this house need a faith increase. I really do. I really believe that some of you are going through some very, very intensive things. And, and I would say, yes, that's true. Right now, this time, there is a crushing that is going on. There is a pulverizing that is taking place. Have you been feeling like you are being slapped around, stepped on, treated like you're dirt, and you've got to humble yourself? You were in the right week. Am I the only one? No. Okay, so let me speak you to you tonight. Because the night's message is pulverized to power. You see, any time we get to that place where there's an intense crushing or stripping, all the things we absolutely hate, but yet God will do it so many times a year because he's preparing us. He's getting us ready to walk at a greater level of power. Just like it's true, the phoenix rises from the ashes. The victory is in the resurrection, all of these things. There had to be a crushing of Jesus on the cross, and he had to die, and they had to all say, oh, my God, the story is over, and then, boom, he came back. Sometimes I think God wrote all the stories like that, and we love to watch the Avengers and all of these other things because we always see that the good guys die, but then somehow or another they raise again. The same is true for us. <clears throat> We're the good guys. We may die, but we will rise again, right? And so tonight's message is about that. <clears throat> it's about the fact that you, I know you're in this place. God knows you're in this place. No, I haven't been in your house listening to your conversations, but God has. God has been there. And he told me, he said, they're crushed. They're losing their voice. <clears throat> It's miraculous as I'm standing up here today because yesterday I had no voice. I'm talking none. I went to bed last night. I laid hands on my neck. I took communion and I said, I command my healing in the name of Jesus. And tomorrow I have to talk to people in the morning. I have to talk to them at night. And I have a TV show on Thursday, Lord, and I need you to resurrect my voice. He gave me my voice today. So you see, when you really want to do something, you got to command it to take place, and God will do it. Because he wants it to happen, he just needs you to ask. But in the week of crushing, in the week of pulverizing, in the week where you want to quit, in the week where you're sure that you are not going to resurrect from the dead, I promise you, you will resurrect from the dead. But you need to get on the faith of God. You need to get God's strategy. And God began to speak to me, and he began to talk to me about how he is the bread of heaven. He is manna from heaven. And when we eat the manna from heaven, we will live. Do you know when they were in the wilderness? Well, where were they? They were in the wilderness. They were in the desert. They were in a place where they only could trust God or die. There would be no food unless God provided it. There'd be no water unless God provided it. There'd be no clothing unless God provided it. And half of them would have died from serpents and scorpions biting them. So without God, they never would have made it out of the desert. And he begins to speak to them in, uh, in Exodus, in Numbers, in Deuteronomy. And he talks to them about the fact that although you're in this place, I, God, am your provider. In the crushing and in the pulverizing, we have to get ourselves to a place where we grab a hold of the fact that he is the only manna that we have. He is the only source that we have. And it's okay to be in that place because sometimes it takes the crushing to get to the place of surrender where we say, God, you're it, and I don't know how we're going to get through this, out of this, around this. I do not know how. And he loves that. He loves that. He loves to allow that to happen so that our flesh will surrender. And what fights the hardest is your soul and your body. Your soul and your body are always fighting against what's happening. And when God allows the crushing to come against the soul and the body, you're forced to come to the place of saying, God, what is this? And how do I receive the manna from heaven? In Numbers chapter 11, verse 7, we... Uh, we have in the word here about the manna. It's a description of the manna. 
And the word says that the manna was a coriander seed, and the color thereof is the color of bedillum. And the people went about and they gathered it. They gathered this is when they were in the desert and God gave them the manna. And the word manna means what is it? Do you ever felt like when God gave you what you weren't really asking for, when you weren't sure what you needed, you didn't say, what is that? I'm not sure I asked for that as the blessing, but okay. So they said, okay, God, we ain't got no food. We ain't got no water. This is it. What is it? And they took the what is it, and the word says that they gathered it, they ground it in mills, they beat it in mortar, and they baked it in pans, and they made cakes of it. And the taste of it was the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Now, Jesus calls himself the bread of heaven. He tells us that in John chapter 6. He says, I am the bread of life. He's talking to the disciples, and he says, Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So there's a correlation between the what is it in the desert. Jesus here in the New Testament, that's the Old Testament, is saying, hey, I am the bread of heaven. Like I'm talking to you. The manna has arrived on the scene, and I am him. Two different uh, segments of the Bible, the old and the new. Now, in the old, the word says that the coriander seed was beat up. It was beat up. It was pulverized. It was turned to dust before it was baked. Who do we know in the New Testament that was pulverized? that was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities, that the chastisement of your peace is upon his shoulder, that by his stripes you may be healed. He is the manna that we eat today, and he understands being pulverized. He understands being crushed. He understands being bruised. But there's a difference between him and us. He took the bruising that we might live. Now, we as disciples will take the bruising so other people may live. Have you ever taken a hit so that somebody else can live? Have you ever been the sacrificial lamb on the cross so somebody else might know the Lord? That don't feel good. That don't feel good. And flesh squirms. Flesh squirms when it's in that situation. So if any of you are in that place right now, God's given you a word. He's saying, it's okay. I know about being pulverized. I know about being crushed. But walk with me in the process because every seed that dies grows a harvest. The kernel must die before a harvest is grown. You must die before you get to the place of power. You must leave behind everything that God is whipping, allowing you to be whipped up on. Now, he's not doing the whipping, but the enemy loves to do the whipping. That's his job. But God allows that to happen because he wants us to get to the place where we're willing to say, oh my God, Lord, you got to deal with me on this thing. And this is really, really hard. And I want to quit. And I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm not sure about this. That's right. If there's anybody in this house that's never said, I don't want to quit, man, I need to touch you. I don't know about you, but I said it before. I've been on my knees, bowing before that. I want to quit. I want to quit. Pastor Adam's been on his knees. I want to quit. And then the Lord says, that's exactly where I want you to be. Now get up and start fighting. Get up and start fighting. Get up. Keep going. Keep going. This story, the story is not over. So God will humble us during these times of crushing. But the outcome is that we walk in courage. And it's a courage that has an element of purity. Because when we're crushed and we eat the manna, in other words, we eat the word, all right? And in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he tells us about that. Because he says that he gave the manna in the desert for one reason. He gave the manna. He gave the crushed coriander seed. He gave it so that they would be humbled. 
The saints who are humbled are the ones that can hear from God and respond to him. They're the ones that get the word to move forward. If you're in a place of humility, stay there. Don't get up. Don't get up. Uh, it's okay that you're hurting in certain areas because now your ears are open to what God wants to see happen. He says, in the desert, he humbled them, causing them to hunger and feeding them with manna, which neither they nor their ancestors had known. <coughs> Why? To teach them that man does not live on bread, food. Man don't live on what he takes into his natural body alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So when we're in a place of crushing, this is where we have to put on the faith of God because the faith of God is when you get God's strategy. I don't know, probably about two or three months ago, I preached a message on faith. And I talked about Luke chapter 5. And, and we find the disciples in there at the lake of Galilee. And they're fishing. And they pulled up their nets and they don't have any fish in there. And the master comes on the scene and he says, Simon Peter, throw the net over on the other side. And you're going to, and, and Simon Peter says, oh, master, you don't know. Like, we've been fishing all night and we ain't got nothing. Like, we don't know even how many days that they got nothing. But see, he showed up right here and he says, drop the net. So what? That's his strategy. He wanted them to hear his voice say, do something. So they received an order. They did what he said. They put the net in. And when they pulled it up, they had more fish than they ever imagined. Why? Because God wanted to do a miracle and all he needed was somebody to obey the instruction. Half the time, your prayers are so close to getting to a place to receive an instruction, and then you shut down and you don't keep on going. you got to stay in that place until you get the word, get the manna from him, and then do what he says. Just do the one thing that he's telling you to do, and you're going to see a change take place. People will come to me for counseling, and they'll want, oh my gosh, they, they threw out, all these issues, like tons of stuff. Listen, there's only one thing that God's trying to bring out in this meeting. One, if you'll do the one thing that he says to do, everything else is going to shift in place because he wants to do something. So we have to position ourselves to receive the word of God. The word. What is this word, God? And in the case of Simon Peter and the rest of the disciples, the word was cast the net. Now, they could have argued with him. They could have said, listen, you don't even know that this is too shallow here, Jesus. You don't even know that you can only do this certain times a day. You don't even know how many times we do this every month and we don't get nothing. Scriptures don't say that. When the master gave an order, they did what he said, and boom, up came the blessing. <coughs> now, they responded in faith to what Jesus had instructed them to do. Those that were in the desert responded by faith when they had to pick up the manna and were only allowed to pick up so much every day because if they took any more of that because they were afraid, they were not going to get it the next day. See, fear and doubt will cause us to do things that God doesn't want us to do because we think to ourselves, we're going to cover ourselves in this area. I'll just take a little bit more because maybe God's not going to show up tomorrow. Maybe daddy's not going to feed me tomorrow. Maybe today is Tuesday and he'll feed me today, but he's not going to feed me on Wednesday. So let me save enough for that to happen. He said, no, if you do that, it's going to rot. It's going to cause a problem. Why? Because I'm humbling you to test you to see what's in your heart. And what's in our hearts is all the places that we doubt and fear and don't have the faith of God and question and when we're hurting and we're in pain and we feel pulverized and we feel weak, then we respond 
as weak people and we began to do crazy things. We began to manifest in a crazy way. God knows that. But he also knows if we come back to eating the bread of life himself, if we come back to the bread of heaven and get on our knees and say, Lord, I am so pulverized right now and I do not know what to do and I need your help. And then just stay in that place and listen. He will show up. In the pulverizing, in the crushing, we come to a place where we realize we are not on the throne, he is. It's at that place that we are agreeable to lay it all down because we can't fix it ourselves. We can't, get out of, we can't get out of this mess. When I first encountered the healing power of God, I was 23 years old and I was living in Hawaii. And Pastor Adam was gone on a six month deployment. And uh, I was suffering from severe anxiety, depression. My Crohn's disease was really active. I wasn't eating. And the night before I went to bed, I had to go to a funeral the next morning. And I hadn't been through a funeral since my father had died when I was a kid. And I told Adam I wasn't going to go. And he says, you have to go to this funeral. And I said, I haven't been to one. I, I haven't been to my grandparents. I haven't been to anybody's because I will not go to a funeral. He says, you got, you got to go to this one. The night before I went to bed, this is my pathetic prayer. I said, Lord, if you're there and you can hear me, I can't get myself out of this one. That was it. That's all I said. I was crushed. I was pulverized. I was weak. I was sick. I was depressed. I had no family with me, and I was 6,000 miles away from home. I'd made some friends, but I weren't even sure that they were friends. And I woke up. I fell asleep, and I woke up the next morning. I had no more pain. I had a smile on my face. I had the joy of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit had touched me in the middle of the night. But I didn't pray some eloquent prayer. I didn't make any promises I couldn't fulfill. I didn't uh, negotiate with God. Man, I wasn't smart enough for any of that. I just knew I was in pain. So I brought forth this weak prayer and boom, he came and rescued me. And that one night, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more depression, and no more Crohn's disease. Went to the hospital, my file was this thick. They said, throw it out, there ain't nothing wrong with you. I said, yes. But then the journey began. That was only one touch. The journey began that I had to learn to eat the bread of life. I had to learn to eat the word of God. I ate the word of God morning, noon, and night because yes, my fear came back. Yes, my depression came back. And yes, my anxiety came back. Why? Because my brain was in a state and a function of always being anxious, always being fearful, and always being depressed. So I took a long time for my brain trees to grow in a right way. But the word of God did it for me. And the word of God taught me to fight from the place of crushing to a place of courage. I still get pulverized today. Ah, this week I got beat up really bad. And I got knocked in the knees, the stomach. Get yourself up and straight. I got knocked around really bad this week. And I said, God, is it only me going through this? He said, no, it is not only you. I'm working on you. I've got some things you got to fix. And I said, all right, then let's fix them. He says, you got to fix them. And you got to tell them that I got to fix it because what I plan on building on top of you and on top of all the others is a double portion. And it's coming September 29th. And if you don't get it straight now, I'm not going to have a strong enough foundation to double the blessing in your life. I don't know about you all, but I want my double. I want my double. I don't want to roll into Rosh Hashanah and only get my single because I didn't take the beatings well enough this week. Lord, just keep me down. Lord, just keep me off my throne and get me to your throne. Lord, just position me properly. Lord, just do what you got to do because this is only one week and that can be a whole six months of blessing. 
See, that's, what, that's the kind of conversations you got to have with God. And, and he will say, yes, that's faith. I'm going to deal with you right now on this thing. But every time our daddy deals with us, he deals with us because he's taking us to a better place than we are right now. And this is what you have to understand. See, you got to put on your faith to know and understand that that is the word of God. That, that um, you know, the word is about living the abundant life. Only the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but he comes to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. That's John chapter 10, verse 10. So if he's the abundant God to give it to us abundantly, then that's who he is. He's not going to change his character. We may get beat up, but he's still taking us to abundancy. See, the thief comes because we have opened doors in our life and he gets access that way. But once he takes access, daddy says, shut the door, get yourself up straight. We're closing it off and we're going to build a strong foundation to move you forward because that's what I want for you. Why? Because you are a witness to me and everything that I've done in your life. And I can't let you look like you are all shabby down here, like you ain't got nothing. And when I have given you everything, because that's a reflection of him, right? When he took him to the promised land, why did he take him to the promised land where everything was bigger? Because he's bigger and he's greater and he's better and he wanted them to believe it. So he sent the spies in, in Numbers chapter, I think Numbers chapter 12, to go in there and to take a look. And some of them came back and said, he's awesome. This is amazing. We're going to go in there. And some of them were like, no way, man. Did you see them giants in there? Forget it. Forget it. And Jesus and Jesus, God was like, Hey, if I'm that good to show you that much, are you going to believe how good I am and that I am the God of abundance? We got to get it on straight. So no matter where you're at, the band can come up. No matter where you're at, no matter how broken you are, no matter how much you don't understand about what has happened to you, no matter how much it makes no sense to your mind, no matter how many questions, but why God? But when God? But how, God, no matter all of that, no matter the doubt, no matter the fear, no matter the depression, no matter all of those things, our God is good. He is good. And that's what you have to hold on to. And he wants to bring you to a place of power, to a place of courage, to a place of victory, to a place of the resurrection, to a place of a strong foundation where he can plant something that's going to grow. He wants to take you to that place. But when we get down here, the enemy is really great about telling us that that's not who dad is. You need to shut your ears and eat the word of God. He says, I am the bread of heaven that has come down to give you life. He tells us that in John chapter 6, right? He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. He was crushed, bruised, stripes went on him. That we can live there. Now, when you have the faith of God, what you do is you say, Isaiah 53, 5, that's what God said. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace is upon him. No, wait, wait, wait. That's coriander seed. Wait, that's a pulverization. That's the manna that they ate in the desert. Wait, if he's willing to do all of that, then I have to live in a place where I believe him. That's the strategy. I have to live in that place. I have to, why? Because I ate the word. See, you eat the word. You, you let that word soak down on the inside of you. And you say, no, wait. I'm going to live and eat this. Oh, that's who he is. That's who he is. That's heaven's perspective. That's heaven's way. When you begin to get down here, you're in the earthly realm and you're in the soulish realm. The soulish realm is where your mind, your will, and your emotions run your life. Your thoughts and your feelings and your emotions are not the sum total of who you are, and they should not have the power to run your life. So what needs to happen is you need to fight back with the Spirit, and you need to see above and get in that place, and then God's going to open up a portal, and He's going to show you that what you're seeing is above the earthly realm, above the soulish realm, and into the place where the unseen 
is the truth. Pastor Adam's gonna speak on that on Sunday. He's gonna teach you all about how the unseen is the place of truth. We gotta get our eyes on the unseen. There's so much that's going on in your life and you think it's you or you think it's your neighbor or you think it's your friend. It's not any of those people. It's the forces that rule us in the soulless realm and we have to be greater than that in the spirit. But we have to believe these things about God and that he is good. Can somebody say, my father is good? Say it again, my father is good. Say he has a good plan. He's gonna prosper me. I'm gonna live in abundancy. He loves me. There you go. That's your daddy. That's your daddy. That's your daddy. That's our daddy. That's our daddy. He's a good daddy. All right. Now is the time for the service where we're going to transition to our altar time. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you have, but you got some things to repent of. That's okay, you should be repenting every day. We're gonna have some people up here and they can walk you through a prayer that will help break some of that off of you and get you to that place where you honor the pulverization and you honor the crushing because it's taking you to that place of courage and that place of power. And maybe you need a healing or you wanna receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever it is, we'll have the altar team up here at this time. Let's stand to our feet and worship the Lord for the last song.